Star Wars 7x7 episode 1883 today. We're going to do a Star Wars news potpourri episode featuring some updates from The Mandalorian, Galaxy's Edge, <laughs> The Rise of Skywalker, and a few words from video production assistant Padme. Punch it! Hey Rebel Rouser, I'm Alan Voivod and this is Star Wars 7x7. Thank you so much for joining me for this episode and let's start off with Galaxy's Edge or specifically the Galactic Star Cruiser experience that will be opening sometime down the line and folds in around the Galaxy's Edge experience at Walt Disney World which just opened yesterday so how about that? The one thing that we didn't talk about in regard to Galactic Star Cruiser is the price of the thing and I had been looking at some official release stuff from Disney about Galactic Star Cruiser when I was talking about it here on the show. Pricing wasn't included in that, but it had been discussed in other places, and I had a YouTube commenter point that out to me. And so I went and looked at it, and the base price, at least the way they're reporting it right now, is $3,300 for a cabin of five. And I gather there are two different cabins, and one of them is larger than that and costs more. But $3,300 at first blush sounds like a lot, but then I got to thinking, well, let's break this down a bit, all right? So if you can max it out at five people, that's $660 a person, which for a two-night experience is $330 a night. Still kind of expensive, but then you also have to consider the fact that this is designed to be an inclusive experience, and so there are going to be interactive activities that are thrown in as part of this. Also, some sort of food and beverage is going to be included as well. And in thinking about that, I thought, well, you know, let's assume the least, right? Like dinner on the first night, breakfast and dinner on the second night, and dinner on the third morning before you leave. So four meals, say. If you're you know, really good and frugal with theme park prices, you can probably get away with about $100 per meal. So, you know, that's about $400 inclusive for the food and beverage situation and you know we don't know whether other drinks will be included in this at all and then there's the actual visit to galaxy's edge from what i gather of this i believe a day trip to galaxy's edge is included in this so you know you don't get to see the whole park so a percentage of park admission <laughs> for whatever it would cost to be able to go to galaxy's edge seems to be included in this as well so ultimately, when you start throwing in these additional things, and I'm assuming that you pay for your own lunch in the park, but you know, <laughs> it's all guesswork at this point. Suffice it to say that yes, it is still going to be expensive the way it projects out, but when you start thinking about what's actually included in all of it, maybe it isn't necessarily uh, outrageously expensive, it's just expensive, which is what a theme park experience is, and what a cruise ship experience is, which is what this has been likened to for all intents and purposes. So, yeah, uh, it's still going to be, you know, uh, quite a bit to shell out, but ultimately maybe it's not nearly as pricey as it seems at first glance, maybe. Moving on, the second bit about the rise of Skywalker you know, I've been waiting to hear about the fall movie preview from Entertainment Weekly, but it occurred to me that it's not Entertainment Weekly anymore. It's actually a monthly publication, even though they haven't changed their name. It's still Entertainment Weekly. And if you go to their microsite for advertising, they still advertise a fall movie preview and said that it was going to be on sale August 24th. Well, here we are on August 30th, and there's been no word about it. And if you actually go to the website, the most recent post tagged with a fall movie preview is actually from last September. So who knows what's going on, but that was going to be the next big moment in media as far as any new information about The Rise of Skywalker might have gone. I mean, specifically in past years, the fall movie preview for The Last Jedi's year and Rogue One's year and The Force Awakens year had information, new information in fact, and new photos even about those three movies. So I don't know what's going to happen. I don't know if they're going to do that. There is a fall books preview and <laughs> And, you know, I guess if they do a fall television preview, The Mandalorian could appear in that potentially. But for right now, yeah, it's kind of like, whoa, I don't know what's going to go on. And so if that's the case, then one of the next big media moments is going to be the Empire Magazine 
fall movie preview, which generally includes something about a Star Wars movie coming out at the end of the year. And after that, assuming that all goes well, we'll get our final trailer for The Rise of Skywalker on Columbus Day. Now, rolling back to The Mandalorian, there was an interview that Carl Weathers did with IGN where they asked him about bounty hunters putting people in carbonite, and in the discussion of it, he talks about it as a punishment. And it occurred to me that this could be a situation where bounty hunters decide, well, you know, there are different ways to bring in their bounties, and if the bounties are being more troublesome, then that might be the way they decide to bring them in. That it's something either, you know, you would only do to your worst enemy me or as Carl Weathers put it, you might do it to your friends too if they get too annoying. But ultimately, this whole carbonite business, this is supposed to be the most intense way of bringing a bounty in and one that's pretty horrible, which, you know, of course, from The Empire Strikes Back, we certainly have a sense of how horrible that was and is. Now, there is one other thing about The Mandalorian I want to share with you, and that's from an interview that Gina Carano did with IGN, where she talks about a surprise, and don't worry, she doesn't give away the surprise, but it's worth talking about what she says, so we'll get to that after the break. Stay tuned. This episode is brought to you by Constant Contact, the premier email marketing solution for small businesses and organizations. I've used their service since 2003, and over the past decade and a half, I've watched them evolve, make the product simpler, more powerful, easy to use, and do everything that they can to help train people to use the product more effectively and for it to work with other forms of marketing like social media, for example. So. Check out sw7x7.com slash email to learn more about Constant Contact and start a free trial. Once again, that is sw7x7.com slash email for a free trial. Welcome back. All right, so without further ado, here is what Gina Carano had to say in her IGN interview about this surprise business. Oh, the, the thing I'm most excited about is um, the surprise <laughs> I know that's not, but by the way, when you watch it, you'll understand this surprise. It's such a wonderful, beautiful surprise that I think could float on its own if it wanted to. There you go. And I should also point out that in their descriptive copy, IGN describes it as the quote surprise unquote, and then adds that changes everything. And there's no indication of a changes everything thing in what Gina says in the interview. So I'm not sure where they're coming up with that unless that's just, you know, to make people click like crazy, which, you know, it's certainly effective, I will say. This is the first time that we're hearing about any kind of surprise. And the first instinct, I think, at least I have, is to think that it must have something to do with sort of the overarching plot of the series, which seems to, at this point, involve whatever Werner Herzog is asking the Mandalorian to do to acquire a valuable asset. And this asset is a living being of some kind. And Werner Herzog has become practical and says that the asset can be acquired living or dead against the wishes of this guy, Dr. Pershing, that he's keeping on a leash nearby. Pershing apparently wants this living asset returned alive, but Werner Herzog has other ideas and thinks, eh, you know, like we'll still pay for it even if the asset is not returned alive. But one would imagine that whoever or whatever this living asset is, that this must tie into the surprise that Gina Carano is hinting at. And man, to suggest that this thing, like as a surprise, like just the idea of it could float by itself. Oh boy. And if Dave Filoni is involved with this as well as John Favreau, but I mean, you know, Dave Filoni, right? If he has this kind of surprise working up, then it's gonna be rather remarkable, I think. So I'm gonna be keeping an ear out for other references to that sort of thing. But for now, that is gonna do it for our potpourri episode of Star Wars News and <laughs> this episode just in general. So thank you so much for joining me for it, as always. Padme was a little early on this at the beginning of the show, but she wanted me to tell you, may the force be with you wherever in the world you may be. Podcast is not endorsed or sponsored yet by Lucasfilm Limited, Disney, or 20th Century Fox. It is intended for entertainment and information purposes only. Star Wars, the Star Wars logo, all names and pictures of Star Wars characters, vehicles, and any other related Star Wars items are registered trademarks and or copyrights of Lucasfilm Limited or their respective trademark and copyright holders. May the force be with them. All original content is copyright 2019 by Star Wars 7x7. We hope you love it.